Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today moves to the southeast, where the southeast governors will be meeting along with Honez and Digbo and traditional leadership in the southeast to discuss a very, very vital and important issues. Mostly, well, well, I'm guessing one of the things that they will be bringing up is the security challenges currently um, the South is, uh, is currently dealing with. Uh, we are joined this morning by Mr. Chukuma Okenwa, who's a public affairs analyst and entrepreneur. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, pleasure. All right. And we also have um, Bosinde Araikbe, who's uh, joining us, a security expert. Good morning, Mr. Araikbe. We're very well. Thanks for joining us. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Okenwa and um, get your views, first of all, on how important you think this meeting is between the Southeast governors and, you know, the political traditional uh, leadership in the Southeast. Uh, is it, you know, a little too late or is it perfect timing that these discussions are had? Well, it's late, but as he said, uh, better than, than late than never, uh, because the, this meeting is one we've already anticipated, we've spoken about, we've advised on the need for governors to meet, and of course have a timely conversation on how to stem the tide with respect to the rising security challenges in the Southeast. Unfortunately, they have kept their blind eyes while we say businesses collapse, businesses crippled in the Southeast, and no one seemed to be doing anything. So now that perhaps after about six weeks of losing the first uh, one week in a week, uh, they are now thinking of uh, meeting together. I think it's commendable. But I do hope that uh, they come up also with conversations uh, that are timely and that are expected, uh, rather than maybe like touching on every other issues, apart from the major one that we have to ensure that businesses are restored back to no in the Saudis. All right. Uh, Mr. Raipe, you're a security expert. Uh, share with us what you think the focus of this discussion should be. Mr. Raipe, can you hear us? Okay, I can hear you now. All right. I, I'm saying that you're a security expert, so I want you to share with us what do you think the focus of these conversations should be between the Southeast governors and traditional uh, rulership? Okay, I think the focus for this meeting is the security. Because the security situation in the Southeast now is very great. And the focus for this meeting is how the security. Yeah, it shouldn't just be the security of the that and do feelings and act. We should also focus on the other areas of security, such as food, food security. Food security, uh, we should focus on economic security. These are very important things of security because the current security in that area has threatened investors, business, livelihood, and even the local. So, the governors are being well together, but uh, they should try and ensure that these people that are keeping this money is properly considered and why we do so with an actual point in the Okay, okay, go on, Em, but I want you to share from your, you know, the knowledge that you have as a security expert. What do you think is currently going on in the Southeast? Are, are these elements of the IPOB or are these really just criminal elements who have taken advantage of the IPOB narrative and the lack of security infrastructure in the Southeast? I think uh, criminal elements have taken advantage of the IPOB campaign and everything is done on the head of IPOB. You understand? That's what I think. I also think, why do we currently in Anambra? Is because of the election that is coming. I was hoping that at this time our politicians should have been matured enough to avoid violence, violence in their political activities. But as it is now, what we can really suspect 
So, as a personal and outsider's view, one can only suspect that the behalf of politics is involved, especially in that of Anambra. And since they have a name, they have been very easy. They carry on and blame it on that name. So, I believe that the Southern leader is sincere to themselves. They are not fighting anybody. They have so much power in their area. So they should try to utilize their power properly. If they are having a security challenge, sorry, security challenge, they are able to manage themselves. If many people are a people of culture, they have strong culture, they have a good different mentality. Anything that will jeopardize their business, they always stay away from it. But this time, they have a large, personal, and selfish interest, political affirmation, to allow them to overlook their number one structure, which is the business lifestyle of the people that has made them so rich and so independent and they are negotiating on the platform of political channels and affirmation. So it is very, very important that the South Africa realize this and understand that they are not alone and violence is not part of them. All right, hold on, Mr. Rappi. it is also important for them to keep making their point known to the Nigerian government. To always keep Nigerian government on the same and to make sure that the government of the federal republic is able to fulfill the election promises to all regions without a doubt in the world. And that there should not be any sentimental, governmental, and political in this country. So I think we should keep pushing for what they deserve. But we should respect their land. That's what I think. All right. Hold on, Mr. Wright. Um, Chukuma Okenwa, let, let me go back to you now. Um, to also get your views on what exactly might be going on. Because we, we've had very, very sad stories from the Southeast in the last couple of weeks. Um, the biggest shock, of course, would you know, be the killing of uh, uh, Dr. Chike Akunili. Um, but you know, that is just one you know, of dozens of different incidents. Joey Bokwe's house, of course, was affected over the weekend. Um, so I want you to share your thoughts on what you think might be going on. Are these IPOB elements that seem to be wrecking havoc? or criminal elements who have taken advantage of, you know, the narrative in the Southeast and are going after who they, you know, think, you know, you know benefits from the government? I think uh, one of the things that is um, happening of lately is that some enemies of the Southeast are trying to create a Southern version of the Eastern narrative in the North. We know that the, the Northeast is largely you know, uh, uh, um, a kind of um, um, tackle with insecurity. They are faced with the challenge of insecurity. And that has, of course, limited the region for years. And uh, that's exactly what is fast becoming. Endlessly, when I look at uh, the way the IPOB agitation uh, started and what it has turned into, Ms. Akiwa, well, we, we seem to have lost sound from your end. All right. We need to reconnect with uh, Chukuma Okinwa there. Um, uh, Mr. Raikpe, are you can you still hear us? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right. Um, it, it's a very, very difficult situation, and I know that the Southeast governors will be um, you know, on their toes, I believe, to ensure that they sort these things out. Um, but can you address also the failure of the IPOB in being able to clarify exactly who these people are that have created all the chaos and the tension in the Southeast? Because they've always put out statements saying that these are not their members. Can you hear you clearly? Uh, can you hear me clearly now? I can hear you. Okay, so I'm asking, do you think that the IPOB itself has also failed um, when they put out statements denouncing these actions and these, you know, crimes that are being committed, do you think that they should do better um, if they want anyone to believe that they're not the ones responsible? Well, uh, I think the IPOB coming out to denounce 
the attack that they are not the one responsible, uh, first of all, to them, uh, it's a way of uh, trying to get members of the public to still be in support of their fight. That is for those that are supporting them. They are trying to make sure that their fan base, their support base, is not clouded with uh, rumors of attacking uh, harmless and innocent civilians and offending me in their agitation process for a self uh, independent uh, entity. And that's what I think they are doing. But personally, and they're generalizing it, I think it, uh, it's not of any use. It's not of any use because uh, right now, because of their previous antecedents, anything they are, anything regarding insecurity, the IPOB will be an escape route for security agencies to end their investigation and look for an easy way out, whether they are the one perpetrating it or not. But however, for a group like IPOD to tell you we are not the one that has done this, I think it is actually true. But if they have done it, they will not deny it. In the fact, the attack they have carried out on that they are responsible for, they have always manned up this study. Okay. And the ones that they are not, they have seen that it will bring a bad name to their fight, so they always come out to disclose the first information from the public concerning them. But what I think that should be happening now is this. I think I thought to focus more on getting international support rather than uh, allowing some certain form of economic insecurity that has been affecting especially the Uber people. You know, when you shut down the whole of the region, you are shutting down a full economic hub that benefits the locals more. And there is very little message you send to the Nigerian government. You see, when you shut down the Uber state, the Nigerian government is not shut down. When you shut down the Igbo state, Lagos is the real import and export center. The North has most of the city. There are in roads that people can still go to the North, go to every other part of the country, from other places outside of your area. So when you shut down your place, you shut down local business, you shut down local business, you shut down Mama Kechi, who survives from her kids. He shut down on Kulemeka, who is trying to take pieces from that is business. You do not affect any Musa, you do not affect Delhi, you do not accept, accept any Aide Emu, and you do not accept any kind of Indian. You only accept the Meka and Ngozi, that is it. So you must look for better and more reliable innovative ways that will command the support of every local person in the evil land. If you must push what you are pushing, but anyone that will be bombarded and be as detrimental as the current uh, activities that make them sit at home is, I think they should stop that. All right. All right. Hold on, Mr. Ripe. Biased mind in the mind of members of the public, especially the, the evil people. So what's them? So it's already defeating their fight. That is what I think. Okay. And I think I, the Nigerian government. Uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Ripe, kindly hold on. What is going on? and get properly involved. All right, kindly hold on. Uh, I, I, I want to bring back to Kumar um, uh Mr. Kenwa, can you hear us clearly now? Yeah, I can hear. Him. Okay, so you, go ahead with your thoughts on, you know, what you think might be going on in the Southeast. And then I want you to, you know, wrap it, you know, well, move into talking about um, something that I had spoken about before, and that is questioning who really is in charge of the Southeast. You know, who do the people really listen to? Is it the leadership, the you know, political leadership? Is it the traditional leadership? Is it Ohanez and Igbo? Who really do they listen to? And, you know, that would help us determine what the use of this Southeast Governors Meeting would be. But go ahead. Sadly, at the moment, uh, the people have lost uh, the confidence in the elected leadership. And we see a hijack by non-state actors. Uh, like every morning in the Saudis, uh, like over the weekend, people are wondering, oh, what did I pop say? Are we returning to work on Monday? Will there be work? And that is quite disappointing uh, for that leadership gap. And that's part of one of the things we want them to look at tomorrow, how they can actually bridge that gap, that leadership gap, for losing people to the extent that, you know, people could I, I prefer to follow the instruction of non-state actors above the elected leadership. I mean, it really calls for concern. And then, based on the issue of who actually is in charge, you know, uh, who is responsible for all of this, like I did mention before, 
it has gone beyond that ball, but enemies of the Southeast are actually working against the interest of the region. So thank you so much. Oh, 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 explain exactly what, what that means. Enemies of the Southeast um, working against the interests of the Southeast. What does that mean? Yes. Of course, I see some interest, like already before now, we've seen just like in terms of even from Abinishi, when we saw peaceful protests, it was a case of like treating one region of the country as more important than the others. One region, you have like some certain behaviors. You treat it with all of the full military might. In some other cases, we see negotiations and all of it. So I see that the, the way the presidency and the LG has handled this issue have not shown fairness and equity because all well, that we see even from the IPOP in terms of extremism was created by the government unwittingly based on the way it handled this matter. And I see that the North has certain interest. Like I didn't mention before, they want to create an Eastern version of the South, right? Just like you have the North, uh, North Eastern uh, version of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the North, you know, so which, which should not be so. Okay, so, so what you're saying is that some of these people that are committing these crimes, arson, burning down DSS offices, FRSE offices, attacking police officers, um, murdering people on the, in the southeast may be orchestrated by interest from outside the southeast and not the IPOB. That's exactly. That's exactly. That's exactly. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, 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 tell me more about what you think the southeastern governors can achieve. If, if you've already stated that they are not necessarily in charge of, you know, the southeast political leadership, you know, is not necessarily in charge. What can they achieve with these discussions? Would they be seeking more security um, um, work or you know, more assistance from security agencies in the southeast? They, they need to work on the mind of the people, come up with a strategy to work on the mind of the people, regain their confidence, and with that, the southeast can move forward. People should be able to take instruction from elected leaders, not from non state actors. How, how possible is that going to be, seeing that these are the same people? that have been there, you know, for the last six years? It is possible. There is what they have not done, and that is to engage in dialogue. With dialogue, they can actually achieve a whole lot by launching, of course, a strategic psych psychological operations to work on the mind of the citizens. All right. Mr. Raikwe, can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So, Mr. Okenwa believes that, you know, some of the people who are committing these atrocities in the southeast are... Um, you know, not necessarily people, you know, or rather they have been supported by forces outside the Southeast to create a similar situation like what we've seen in Northeast Nigeria. Do you agree that there is that possibility? Yes, because even people do not have So I agree. You see, the only challenge why the will largely be on the IPOD. It's because uh, it is a result of their agitation. You understand me? But as for those currently participating in the class, I also strongly suspect that there are a lot of uh, external pressure from all parts of the country. Just like the other speaker has said, it is not something similar to the of the North. I can excuse for politics. For politics. But however, the 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 icon members have very strong hold of the Islamic. And at this point, I think they have to instead the first copy by ensuring that everybody in the color that has been part of this without the use of the direct level, but that they are able to keep them out through their investigation, get proper evidence, publish it in the media, recommend handover places to the government, so that the public will see them that they are not in the process of this work. Because so many and members from the public is concerned. It is absolutely. And that is bad for what we are doing. So at this point, we have to fight with that. Because one way or the other, it is needed. But as for external forces, it is true. 
I'm not only in uh, this iPhone, even in Iran, even in Afghanistan, everywhere. Why there is a war? Why there is a war? Why there is a war? There are people who use your business to go to trouble. What are we going to do if they are sharing the drug crime? I think that the situation is really coming into the eyes of the data of the South. And that is the situation already in the North. Then you have the fire. Now, you have ICR. You have Bandi. You have Kensler. You have the traditional equipment. You don't have the negotiator. You have the team. You know, it's not a proper business. So, you go to the business of the United States and the business of the United States. So if I said there's not a properly strategized to the interest of the local sector and the protection of the region, you just will see another map in the south. Okay, well, um, I'll, you know, first of all, say it's, it's not very clear um, getting feed from uh, you, Mr. Raikwe. I'm, I'm not sure why, but, you know, we're struggling to hear exactly, you know, what you're saying. Um, but I, I would keep it going. I, I, I want, you know, you to also share your thoughts on why it seems almost impossible or, or the security agencies in the southeast have not been able to address these challenges. If houses can be so easily burnt, if police stations can be attacked so easily, FRSE office, even the DSS office can so be, be so easily attacked, and we've not seen any arrests, we've not seen any you know, work by security agencies to capture these persons. What does that tell you, Mr. Raipi? Mr. Raikwe, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you're talking to me. Yes. Okay. Well, the security agencies, the truth is that uh, they are limited. We all know that Nigerian security agencies are not well funded and equipped to run a normal, uh, a violent free society. How much more a a very intense environment where you even have uh, people and hands available. And security agencies are not equipped to even uh, uh, do normal ordinary investigation that has to do with two fighting. How much more in a hostile situation like this? They are not equipped. And even if they are equipped, we don't see them making this progress. Because uh, see, this is where state police comes in. So long that uh, members of security agencies a lot of them in this part of the, of the country are not indigenous. If they begin to work properly and begin to do exceedingly great, it will be attributed to the fact that because they are not indigenous, they are harming the indigenous and doing this and that. And as they are not working as I know, and as they are not equipped as I know, it will be seen as if the Nigerian state can't protect her people. So they are caught in between the devil and the deep blue sea. There is very little they can do. But however, those that are posted to that area, if I may advise the security agency, I will advise them to go local. I will advise them to go intelligently. I will advise them to build a strong intelligent network. I will advise them to be more of a broker in this situation, other than crime fighter. Because if they want to go head to head, I am not sure that they can both in will and in performance and in equipment. You understand me? Innocent people just end up paying too much price. So I think there should be more of these builders at this point. It also has to limit casualties that would have become them if they are able to choose this uh, idea of uh, being a, a bridge builder. Instead. Okay, but, but, but I am... Well, I, I don't know if I would agree that you know, they, they ha of course, yes, they have their, you know, weaknesses here and there, security agencies. Um, but to be completely silent, you know, is what a lot of people may not agree with. You know, so maybe we would assume they are working, you know, behind the scenes, you know, to see how they can address these challenges. But if weeks after we still haven't seen any arrests or we still haven't seen any, you know, proper work being done, then it might mean something entirely different. Uh, Mr. Raikpe, I also want you to share your thoughts on, on funding. 
because these elements, these criminal elements, seem to be getting support somehow, some way, either from you know ammunition, or funding, or petrol, or vehicles. But there, there's definitely something that is funding these attacks. So, what do you think it might be? Well, I think uh, funding. First of all, uh, I am not uh, an IP member, so I may not know about their funding. And uh, so, asking that question about their funding, I think uh, you people should try and reach uh, their spokesman. No, no, I, I think you're, you're not, you, you didn't get the question right. Mr. So Rackley. If I make you a little understanding of my view, I will say when people come together to contribute 10, 10 naira for it, if there are 1 million persons, you have 10, 10 million naira. That is what I will say. So moving forward, I think the security agencies cannot properly make any arrest. You can only arrest who you know and who you can reach. You can't arrest a team. You understand me? These people are not coming out to tell you I can be arrested. No. As I speak to you in Anandra State, I have some people on ground because I'm supposed to visit Anambra this week. I have people on ground. And I'm aware there are some things I intend to visit, some local environment, or really sort of men, Osa, or I intend to visit some places. And so these places their police stations are not functional. And the policemen are telling you we cannot resume to work, we are scared for our life. Is that the same policeman you are asking to make an arrest? Who is he going to arrest? The one who said it. No, and I don't blame him. I don't think it is worth risking his life. He can be dying carelessly for political mistakes that will be settled tomorrow and amnesty will be given to killers who have killed military officers, police officers, made their wives widows, killed children, kidnapped girls and impregnated them. And then one government will tell me they are giving them amnesty that we should embrace them. You see? So I don't think it is worth the life of the policeman. Because when he finished performing, Whatever security agency, be the military, be the Department of State Service, be the police, I don't think it's worth your life. Because when they finish dying for this situation, tomorrow the government will see them and everybody will be granted amnesty. And then their children will be suffering with their widowed wives. Right. Nothing to take home. I don't think it's worth their effort. All right. The time of this is with you as a Nigerian. All right. Mr. 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 Rikley, government um, knows how to discuss this. The Minister for Labour is an evil man, the Manambra State. The President should immediately send him back home to talk to his people. That is what happened. That is how they got the amnesty. That is how they got the Niger Delta to the town in those days. The then Vice President, Hitler Jonathan, was sent back home to discuss with the people, which he did. And after that, he got peace. So the Minister for Labour, an Igbo man, should be sent back home. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, an Igbo man, should be sent back home. Every minister from the Igbo tribe should be sent back to their state to go and begin to hold discussions and come up with results for the federal government. Because they are the federal representatives from that environment who got to the presidency. So they should, they should all be sent back home to go and settle this issue. They shouldn't be sitting in Abuja and talking. What are they talking? That is the only way we can move ahead forward. We want to move forward with politicians with appointments in federal environment, the sent at home, can action to absorb the things and bring the solution for all parties. And if they can't, they should be relieved of their position. That is what I will call for. That's the solution. Stop allowing innocent investors to go and sacrifice themselves for what they do not know. Thank God they are not even pushing us. Thank God they are not even pushing us. So their children don't become women. It's the job of those politicians from those regions who are part of the federal government that these people are talking to to now come to do a representation of the federal government by appointment and indigenous of this environment by death and what's there. All right. That is the only I, way. I, I also want to ask. These agencies can do nothing at this point. All right, Mr. Raikwe, you, you've mentioned dialogue and negotiation. Um, there's also, of course, those who would say that force would be a better option and I'm, I'm asking this now because the army has its annual operations across the country 
Um, there has been the Python dance in the southeast for a couple of years now. And it, uh, of course, has released a statement saying that there would be another, uh, the start of another army operation in the southeast. It says here that it's going to be um, running concurrently in the 2nd, 6th, 81st, and 82 uh, divisions uh, of uh, the southwest, south-south, and southeast regions, respectively. Um, do you think that this might also be the answer, or at least it would uh, create some peace in the southeast all through the, the period that these army operations are going to be running? I have two views. To the people of the south-south, sorry, to the people of the southeast, this will be another oppression against them in that trending something on their fundamental human rights as a military in a democratic, a democratic setting will be assuming so much force to carry out oppression internally, which is ordinarily the of the police. And the public, through whoever can sponsor them from the southeast, will tell this to the international media. And it will again place the federal government and the Nigerian government in that light with regard to human rights and abuse, which definitely will happen on the army front. Two, the second view is this. If the federal government, because the army is the federal government, the president is the commander-in-chief, such cannot happen without his permission. If the army wants to carry out this kind of operation and contemplating the use of force in the southeast, I want you to know that this same army has been in the north, in all parts of the north, fighting insurgents. With the same force they want to bring to this south, the question is, what is their success story? Have they been able to stop the Boko Haram? Have they been able to stop the Hexmen? With all this force we used in Bruno, if some these are not still occupied by the, by the Boko Haram? All right. Um, of course, going through these conversations mostly concerning the issues in the southeast and what uh, must be done. We are also scheduled to have... Uh, a conversation with the police uh, public relations officer in Anambra State to share uh, with us, of course, feed from what happened in Newi over the weekend and what, you know, is currently being done to create some peace in the southeast. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we, of course, will continue conversation with Mr. Raipe just before the PRO joins us. So stay with us here on The Breakfast. We'll be back. <laughs> 